In this video, I'm going to go over how to run an effective thermal conductivity simulation in the Puma software. It's assumed that the installation has been complete. If that's the case, then Puma can be run by simply typing Puma into any terminal. The first step in running a thermal conductivity simulation is to generate a domain on which to run that simulation. This can be done by either importing a microtomography image or generating an artificial geometry. Uh, for this case, I'm going to import a microtomography image and I'm going to import the fiber form uh, sample that comes with the software. Since this is a laptop instead of a workstation, I'm going to take a very small subsample, uh, in this case 256 cubed. Uh, one important thing, since I'm on the subject of, of domain size here, is that the domain size is pretty important actually for the overall speed of the thermal conductivity solver. Since the conductivity solver uses uh, a fast Fourier transform, uh, the, the domain size has a pretty large effect. It tends to be the fastest if your domain size is 2 to the n. Um, it doesn't have to be 2 to the n, but what you want to do is, is minimize the largest prime factor of the domain size in each direction. So for example, 400 cubed, even though it's not 2 to the n, is pretty good. Uh, same thing with 800 cubed. In this case, to make it run as fast as possible, I'm going to use 256 cubed. Um, the next step is to go to, once it's been imported, is to go to material properties, conductivity, and then finite differencing method. The first step is to select the materials. In this case, since we're talking about a carbon fiber material, we have air and we have void. Since uh, presumably we've worked with this material before, we've selected an appropriate uh, threshold value or determined an appropriate threshold value. In this case, approximately 87 is correct. So here, what we have to do is define each of the two materials. So we say between 0 and 86, since these are inclusive numbers is air, and then we give it the conductivity value of air, which is 0 0.0257 watts per meter Kelvin. Then the carbon fiber phase is defined as grayscale between 87 and 255, and an approximate value for the conductivity of a carbon fiber is uh, 12 watts per meters Kelvin. Uh, the reason that this is set up in this way is that you can perform quick sensitivity analysis on it. You can change these values quickly and see how that affects the overall conductivity of your material. The next things that have to be set are the accuracy, which is used for the iterative solver. Uh, typically values of 1e to the minus 4 is taken, and this decides the threshold after which uh, the residual has become small enough when you're doing the iterative solver that the uh, iterative solver will, will stop. And then finally, the number of threads, which typically is best the, to use the number of physical cores available on the computer, so in this case it's four. Finally, the simulation directions in X, Y, and Z. Um, we'll just run this in one direction to make it uh, a faster simulation. And then the save resulting map option gives you a chance to uh, to save the steady state temperature flow. Uh, the way this works, which is described in more detail in the user manual and documentation, is that a temperature gradient of one degree Kelvin is imposed uh, across the material, in this case in the X direction, and then the steady state temperature is solved at every point. The steady state temperature can be saved, and if this option is clicked, it will be saved both as, both as a, a 3D TIFF for visualization purposes that has been normalized and also as uh, just the raw binary which contains the floats. When the begin calculation button is clicked, the simulation will begin and the progress of that simulation will be shown here on the right.
Once that's done, the effective thermal conductivity of the material in the x direction will be shown here. The y direction would be shown here if the simulation were run, and the z direction would be shown here. Uh, to give you guys uh, just a, a, a quick view of what the, the resulting map would look like, the temperature field, um, I visualized it in pair view where you can see the fibers and I took a slice of the map and you can see the uh, using periodic boundary conditions here the temperature field inside the material. So that concludes the effective thermal conductivity. It doesn't address all aspects of it. Um, in order to get a more detailed understanding of this process, uh, it's recommended that you read this section in the user manual.